praise jesus ladies and gentlemen welcome once again the importance of god's blessings in these four areas of our lives these are the if you are stable in these four areas it is believed that you are stable in life a christian should be stable in these four areas one spiritually a christian should desire to be uh, spiritually alive spiritually connected spiritually stable spiritual spiritually awakened must desire to be successful spiritually in the book of john chapter 4 verse 23 24 yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the father in spirit and truth for they are the kind of worshipers the father seeks god is spirit and his worshipers must be worshiped in spirit and in truth we must be we, we for us to worship god it must happen in the spirit and in the truth so as a christian we should desire to be successful spiritually eh? this comes first first in this that we communicate to god so is our are you are you spiritually alert are you spiritually uh, awake are you spiritually connected do you understand spiritual matters hm uh we need to be spiritually stable and i will connect the first one with the second one which is even also mentally stable uh, we need to be mental stable spiritually and mentally stable we need to desire god to help us to be able to discern things to move correctly to have the sound mind paul is telling timothy Uh, may god bless you with a sound mind uh, we need to be to be to be to to be like jesus he was stable mentally and spiritually uh, so spiritual stability is very important understanding things of the spiritual understanding uh, ways of the spiritual a uh, maneuverability of the spiritual is very very important uh gaining wisdom asking god for wisdom asking god uh for knowledge and wisdom like solomon uh it's very important in a life of a christian uh when god asked solomon what do you want he had every other reason to ask for his selfish uh endeavors but he seeked from from he seeks the wisdom of god that would help him to be a great leader uh so spiritual stability is very very important in a life of a believer uh let's read this chapter in the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 52 and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature in favor with God and man so we need to seek God so that we can grow in favor of God and man but most importantly the bible say he grew in wisdom we should grow uh, when it comes to things like wisdom we should grow in wisdom uh, and stature uh, in wisdom and stature Uh, in favor with god and man uh, are you favored by god are you favored with men so spiritual spiritual ability is very very important spiritual ability is very important wisdom is key 
Wisdom is very, very important in the life of a believer. Uh, if you read the book of Matthew chapter chapter 6.33, it says, it starts by saying, Seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. So we need to be spiritual and righteous so that we can understand the spiritual matter and the importance of spirituality. For a Christian purpose, desire to be stable spiritually and mentally. To have wisdom. It's very important to have wisdom. Huh? Very, very key to have wisdom. It's so that it balances you out as a believer. It balances you as a child of God. Huh? The third one is physical fit. Physically fit or physically stable. The Bible says 1 Timothy chapter 4, 8. Physically training is good. But training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. So after you pursued spiritual benefits, now the Bible is talking about the physical training is good. Don't despise physical training. Physical exercise is of great importance in the life of a believer. It is good. Of course, Paul is telling Timothy, you, we can start uh, to you start by physical, but don't stop there. Because even spiritual is beneficial. And here we see a, a, a woman in the book of Proverbs 31, 17, 18. A strong woman or a virtuous woman. In this verse, they say she set about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. Huh? You see, they are talking even about her, her strength. Her arms are strong for her task. He's not, she's not a lazy woman. She's not a weak woman. Huh? And this is out of continually pursuing to 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 do hard work to the point he becomes strong huh? so physical exercise is very good brethren don't despise physical exercise is good for your body it has a lot of benefits so the first one is spiritual then Spiritual, then mental uh, stability, uh, mental know-how, mental growth, mental this, uh, uh, mental uh, peace. Mm? Then we have physical exercise, which is good for the body, so that you may live longer. You may overcome a lot of ailments. Uh? It's very good to pursue stability in these four areas okay so don't say you are too saved to exercise huh? don't think it's not cool as a believer to to exercise exercise and enjoy uh, it keeps your body young it keeps your body fresh it keeps your body energetic and it's biblical we see Paul advising Timothy, telling him, you know, it is good to exercise. Physical, uh, to be, to, to, to exercise is good. Then the last one, but not the least, uh, financial stability. Uh, may God bless us with financial stability. Uh, because a poor man is despised in this generation. His wisdom is considered useless. Mm? Uh, don't be the rich man who abused King David when he needed help. Uh? So financial stability is good. The Bible says, Ecclesiastes 9.16, The poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. 
So you can be as wise, you can be the most wisest man in this world. But because of poverty, nobody will hear you. You will be despised automatically. This world don't know wisdom, don't know to take wisdom from a poor man. They don't know what that means. So, poverty will make you be despised. Eh? So, wisdom with poverty is an offense. It will offend and grieve your heart. Okay? We see the story of King David being approached by Abigail, who was the wife of Nabal. And Abigail is telling David, Forgive my husband, because even his name says he is a fool. And Abigail uh, begging for forgiveness uh, to David, so that David cannot go and destroy Nabal, who had abused David when David needed help. So you can also be rich and a fool. So even when God gives you riches, when God gives you financial stability, you need number two, which is mental, um, I'm a wisdom or mental stability. I'm a know-how, knowledge. Don't just be rich and stupid like Nabal. Be rich and also wise. So it's, it's, it's wrong to be poor and wise. And it's also wrong to be rich and wise. So before God gives you financial stability, thank God first for wisdom. There is a reason I arranged it in that form, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially. So you start with the spiritual aspect of things. Men, then you, you, you grow your mind and your mental thoughts, then physically, then financially. Hmm? So that's why we need to balance. In the book of Proverbs 37, 19, two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and neither give me poverty nor riches. But give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may be too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and dishonor the name of my Lord. Um, This verse, in short, what... The proverb is saying in this chapter is God assist me to learn how to balance. Assist me to learn how to balance. Assist me to learn how uh, to balance. To balance. Okay? So when God blesses you so much, ask for wisdom. When you find yourself very poor, eh? very wise, ask God to give you something so that your wisdom will not be despised in this generation. Those areas, four areas in your life that needs special attention while you live in this world, your spiritual life, you are, you are, you, you know, I don't know how to call it, your, your mental uh, health or stability, uh, your physical uh, stability, and your financial stability. Okay? God bless you till next time. Keep on subscribing.